This is the new way. Come on, you're good. We know there's a door, right? Yes, I knew! Oh, okay, it worked! Yeah! <laughs> See, anger works, guys. Just get angry. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> Welcome. You guys know Eric's Tundra. We're, um, we're gonna intro this as a, uh, well, this is the intro to his uh, transformation that we're gonna pull off. Why would you take a Tundra, a Gen 1 Tundra, and put a Ford cab on it? Because Eric's always wanted an extra cab F100 and he can and it's fun and it's cool and it's a challenge and we get to make a lot of little things that might be like wrong right or proper or correct so that's what we're doing uh, this is the actual grill that's going to go on this thing that's a rollover that was not that was not the means of why we're doing the cab swap the cab swap let me lay it out a little bit so maybe three months ago Eric hit me up about, he's like, I think he sold the bug, bug baiter. Uh, and then he talked to me about the Tundra and he's like, well, I think he's like, I'm looking to maybe get a 1400 truck or I want to do something where we can race something. He wanted a full size. We started looking around, started looking at different vehicles, figuring out what it would take to make some of the ones we were looking at, what we wanted. And then it came about and he goes, Hey, what do you think about just putting a F100 cab on the Tundra? That means not cutting the cab away from the cage. That means cutting the center portion of the chassis off completely, bare frame, leave the rear pivots, leave the rear shock mounts, leave the front shock mounts, the cross member, engine placement, trans placement, and frame rails. Just removing that chunk face off. Uh, so that's where we're at. LS Fest comes around. He was gonna drop it off the weekend after LS Fest. And I didn't go, it's just too busy, too much shit going on. And I'm like, I told multiple people, I said, Eric's gonna, Eric's gonna roll the truck. He's gonna roll the truck, I can feel it. And I have like intuitions like that and I always trust him because I can rely on him. Enter rolled truck the first night that he's there. So uh, it's not about driver or any of that. It's just about pushing vehicles. And when you push them, stuff happens. And especially when you're a ex professional skater, that's the name of the game. Do the trick until you land it. You fall, you get up, you do it again. It's Eric. Think about it. He's just an old skater. This is his mentality. This is just a, another tool he's using to push his extremes in his life. So where we're at now, vehicles here, cab is in the shop, got the grill. Uh, we have McQueen hood, McQueen front fenders, McQueen bedsides. We are going to demo this whole portion. There's some details in here I'll go over that are going to be challenges and demo the upper, all the upper chassis here. So all the down tubes, everything, C pillar, all that. We'll just kind of, we're going to find like tasteful, appropriate areas to tie into where it makes sense. Take this thing off put the F100 extra cab on, door slammer style. It's got a lot of patina on it. We'll talk about that in a second too. And then we're gonna build a full two inch score tag, you know, race legal cage. This cage in here is not the right application for the vehicle and how fast it goes. It is, uh, it's, a, it's the craftsmanship's okay on it. It's just not what, this truck goes fast and it, it's got a lot of power and it's, it's fairly heavy. That's just not what you want in there to feel safe. So what we're gonna get is we're gonna get a big ass cage in there. 
a lot more room. It's tremendously wider than a first gen Tundra. And then we'll also put four PRP Alpha composite seats in there. So there won't be those, there was like side-by-side -side seats or smaller suspension style seats in the back. We'll put two uh, PRP Alphas in the front and then we'll do like theater seating in the rear where they'll be like shoulder touching uh, just for packaging. Um, that's the biggest ticket. We're gonna put a different dash in there. Obviously keep the same electronics. It's just, it's all pretty dialed already, but there's definitely gonna be some details as far as negotiating the chassis because there is some center chassis in here that we might wanna leave. I have a real special recipe for where the body's gonna go on here. Um, the wheelbase actually checks out perfect. So we will divulge more of, of the plan with the body next episode, but at least right now we can kind of talk about where we're gonna cut stuff and how we're gonna do that. I mean, obviously there's gonna be mixed feelings about this thing because this is a gorgeous truck to me. The, this like version of it with the like brushed graphite, a uh, little bit of two-tone with the black mixed in. I love the wheel combo, like for a Tundra and the update glass, this works. Like this is a beautiful truck, especially when it's not all messed up. So I do have a soft spot for like what it is and what it has been. Uh, but with Eric, you know, if this is what he's always wanted, an extra cab F100, and well, why not just keep this and sell that and buy this? And it's just, sometimes that's not what you do. And especially when you have vehicles and you're attached to them, you just like, this thing works really well for what it is. And it's kind of dialed and we'll have to retune it. Might have to respring it. I don't know. Um, but I, I just, I want to be clear. Like I do, this is still a pretty girl. I love her. Uh, it just, I'm, I'm excited for the Endeavor with the F100 cab too. One of the issues that we were kind of fighting is this is a mid mount fuel cell, meaning that the fuel cell is not back behind the rear axle, but it's, I mean, you could call it rear still, but it's a mid fuel cell. So it's in front of the rear axle, it's behind the cab. These trucks love to have weight in the rear. It's, they just track better, they handle better, like it's easier to valve them. There's a lot of benefits to that. That being said, we are planning on running fuel containment under the spares in the, in the chassis, but there's like a storage box we built in there. We'll be able to get a pretty good custom shaped tank in there. So that's the plan for that. I can't believe that works. I would have never done that though. You know, that's not like a thing you do. So the cage that's in this thing, it's just, it's not what this truck needs. This truck gets driven fast. It gets driven hard. It's subject to rollovers uh, and there's nothing, it's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but we just need to put something in here that makes sense for the vehicle. And that's what we're gonna do. So we'll have proper uh, A pillar, secondary A pillar, B pillar, proper C pillar, back wall. Uh, there's some stuff on the rear we'll wanna remove, I'll get into that. And then, like I said, we'll have one, two, three, four seats. This thing's pretty narrow. Once that cab goes on, the other nice part about that is the F100 cab is so wide that like the stick out here from like, see, say outside a door to tire, it's gonna be minimal. And you can really see it, like even with the grill from the front, the glass is gonna like actually be proper on this thing where you're not gonna have the tire sticking out all crazy. And in the rear, we're not gonna have to do the thing. You know, one of the distasteful things that sometimes you have to do is if you have a really wide rear, you have to like kick your bedsides out or dovetail or whatever you want to call them, but it's just, it's a nasty thing to have to do for design. So we're not gonna have to do that either. One of the most problematic areas I see as far as finding solutions is cutting somewhere in this section. There's a lot of chassis work here. There's obviously sheet metal tied into this thing, but there's big junctions like this. And I think we really have to figure this out because this main stringer tube coming out is going to the A-pillar section. And since the A-pillar section is gonna be removed so far outward, we're gonna have to really make like just nice executive decisions on how to land this stuff strategically and functionally where it, you know, first and foremost, it's strong and it's proper, but it also doesn't look like we just added uh, a new cage to a pre-existing chassis. That's the stuff I love about this project. That's what 
is really going to be fun to see. Um, a lot of this stuff is going to be done by my guys. I've got a lot of stuff I have to do on my own, so this is just going to be something I can really kind of watch and see the progress on every day without having to have my hands balls deep in it. Whoa, on a gnarly one with that stuff today. Um, <clears throat> what I was mentioning too is the C pillar. So on vehicles, when I mention pillar, A pillar, B pillar, C pillar, and the best stuff is an SUV with a D pillar. But there is no C pillar back wall or cage in here. It's just this. This is your actual structure. Uh, and it's just, a, you know, there's not a connector or anything. So we can really, we'll just demo this down tube, demo that off, cut, grind, sand, cut this guy, grind, sand, that's it. And then we start fresh right from there and we dive in. Uh, what we'll want to do is remove this all as one. We can probably get the majority of it cut out and just kind of forklift this thing off of here and pick it. Once we get down into the nitty gritty of the frame rail under here, then we'll get most of it ground and then I'm gonna have the middle portions of this thing sandblasted so we're not doing stuff where we're removing paint or any kind of coating or greasy shit. We can have like a nice fresh canvas to get going on here. Uh, like I said, I have a design element that I'm gonna incorporate into this thing, but I only wanna get into that when it's being done because it's, uh, it's just something special and I'm excited about that, so we'll leave that. What is the schedule and the plan for this? What stages are we gonna do this in? How long is it gonna take? When's it gonna be done? Eric is gonna hit Midwest Dirt Fest with this thing. He's gonna go out with Blake. That's in roughly, I think it's like 70 something days. What we're gonna do is make sure we get everything, all the necessities done. So obviously cabin cage off, new cabin cage on, everything tied in, dash in, everything working. The way we're gonna do the body on here, as far as you know, fixing it to the frame or the chassis, we're not gonna go hardcore sealed cab style where it's all silicone bronze, full tie-ins, completely sealed. You could fill it up with a hose and it won't leak, not, not any of that. This will be a slip cab style. So there will be some panels that'll be silicone bronze. A lot of them will be race style panels with aluminum. Um, you'll be able to buzz those off with nut plates. Uh, crazy access panels, everything's serviceable. And on the actual F100 cab, we will put like return strips where we can either use aircraft rivets or some kind of fasteners or nut plates. And we'll, we'll build that onto the cab and they'll just have a flange. And so when this thing rolls again, we can just get another cab and we'll know that we build those strips right there. I might even just get them lasered and we'll just, we know exactly where we need to put them on the cab and we'll put them on the cab and then boom, that thing will bolt on again. So that's our program. We're not gonna like go full kill. It'll also have a removable windshield. The removable windshield is gonna be another challenge because that's, if, if you look at the profile of an F100, it's got a very radius corner windshield. So we'll have to really work the aluminum uh, that's going to be the frame for the removal windshield kind of into the car and figure out a mounting system that's going to be a little different from the traditional ones we've been doing. Um, as far as the details, like that stuff, we, we need to get it as far along as we can so it can go to Midwest Dirt Fest and go rip around and then he can bring it back and I can have the guys solidify all the details on it. The freedom we have here, just like on the exotic pre-runner, I see a lot of like tube chassis trucks and even frame rail trucks where they have the chihuahua, the Oh, 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 all right, like this. This tire is so close here. And then the, the glass and the opening is like juiced all the way out here. You gotta do everything in your power to not have that happen. And I see it get overlooked and it is what it is. But at least under the studio roof, we have the canvas to kind of orchestrate that properly. So we get F100 cab, I Clico the front fenders, Clico the bedsides. Clico meaning I just use a temporary fastener to kind of hold the gaps and set all the body lines right. And we'll just, we'll, we'll set the gaps, the door gaps into that. The rear bedsides might have to have like an overlap onto the cab, which is always style points. So get that and then float this thing right where the wheels are perfect into the wheel openings. And we don't have any, you know, because no, 
So what I wanted to do here is just give you guys a intro into what we're gonna be doing with this thing. Uh, this will need to go out with Keith, KDM Shock Technologies, Keith Marigold, and get retuned. We are making a lower center of gravity here. We are adding fuel to the rear and we're adding more weight into the middle. So no matter what, this thing needs to have a revalve to get it to work perfect. It was already working phenomenal. It's very drivable. If you go back to like the Glamis, I mean, I know it's Glamis, so you're not in super hardcore desert conditions, but it still goes through big stuff really fast. inspires confidence, makes you want to drive it faster. It's not scary, it's not out of control. It's a very streetable truck too. So if it's already like that, I can only imagine what it's gonna be like in the new version. And the safety thing is a huge plus too. So uh, you guys can look forward to this. We will obviously keep the whole entire process documented and updates to follow with this thing. Thank you for the support on the channel. Joey and I both see it. Everybody, you know, appreciates the support. We have some merch we sold out on everything except shirts. So we have more orders being placed for all that stuff, but there is some shirts available. Again, like, comment, subscribe. Have a good Monday.